Hello, my name is Mateo Valdivia, and this is comparing dental morphology of oral and pharyngeal jaws and moray eels. Abstract. Capability to research aquatic organisms, feeding behaviors, and diet is dependent on their environment. It's difficult to observe the complete feeding behavior of Gymnothorax mordax, the California moray eel, since they reside near rocky reefs and bring prey back to their crevices to eat. By measuring linear and angular dental characteristics of oral and pharyngeal jaws and comparing them, we can gain insights of an organism's feeding behavior and diet. We use ImageJ to quantify these dental characteristics of 15G Mordex. Teeth which immobilize prey by piercing will be sharp. Teeth which are recurved, pointed towards the esophagus, are beneficial when pulling prey back to the specific location. We expect the pharyngeal teeth to be sharper and more recurved than the oral teeth since we know that the oral jaw apparatus, OJA, is used to grab prey and the pharyngeal jaw apparatus, PJA, is used to swallow prey. Preliminary data supported our hypothesis. I wanted to acknowledge the UCSC core faculty grants, which made it possible for Dr. Rita Mehta to guide me through this project, as well as um, Ryan Halise, who is one of Rita's undergrads. And I also wanted to acknowledge UCSC's Calteach, specifically Gretchen, Melissa, and Marla, since they're the reason why I'm doing this project. Introduction. Unlike terrestrial animals, many fish don't kill their prey before swallowing, and it's really hard for them to capture their prey, since the prey can really just swim away. So Tooth morphology is the key to successfully capturing a struggling prey. Most fish have pharyngeal jaws and special teeth to make sure that they can actually eat their specific prey. Um, so G. mordax has its oral jaw apparatus to bite the prey just to grab it, and then the pharyngeal jaws, which are the jaws in the throat, which most fish have, help swallow the prey by coming up and grabbing the prey and yoinking it back to the esophagus. We're comparing the oral and pharyngeal jaws, and since they both have the same developmental history, we can compare tooth morphology. So the anteriormost and posteriormost branchial arches um, evolved to become the OJA and PJA. And by studying the OJA, PJA, and the teeth, it gives us insights to an organism's feeding behavior and diet. The objective of our research was to measure oral and pharyngeal tooth curvature and sharpness characteristics, and we expected the pharyngeal teeth to be more recurved than the oral teeth, since the OJA's function is to capture fish and the PJA's function is to facilitate swallowing of prey. Materials and methods. Specimen photographs were taken with cameras and scaled in NIH's ImageJ. We divided the maxilla and dentigerous dentary into four equal lengths. The upper and lower pharyngobranchial tooth plates were divided into three equal lengths. We determined differences in curvature between respective sections in the OJA and PJA to build a similarity index, and that similarity index can determine how similar the teeth are in young versus older animals. I measured the relative curvature, angular and linear deviation of curvature, sharpness, and variability in linear tooth dimensions, and I averaged tooth measurements within each section that I took measurements in. The point of doing all of these little steps is to be able to measure within the oral jaws the differences and similarities between the anterior and posterior sections, as well as doing the same for the pharyngeal jaws and then comparing similarities and differences between anterior and then later posterior sides of the oral jaw and pharyngeal jaws. And both of those will help us create our um, index. After quite some time of taking measurements, we identified a problem. Our tooth base length measurement, this line right here, the slope for that line varied a lot from tooth to tooth. Um, and this was pretty bad because we couldn't compare individual teeth to each other anymore. Um, and the whole point of our research was to compare the teeth to each other. So we created a solution and that was to measure the base lengths on a common line. So that would be this, the new measurements are in blue. Um, and that common line, since it is one line, it, they, all the measurements should have the same slope. Um, and that should solve our problem. Uh, it doesn't look like much on an image, which is like the, what we used to do is the red. And then what we're doing now is the blue. And it doesn't look like much on the picture. But then when you look at the numbers, they're like really, really off from each other. Um, so we're glad we caught that. But, uh, Farewell collected data. So I used everything that I learned during this internship and I turned it into a K through 12 science curriculum on fish teeth. The description of phenomenon that students are trying to figure out across the lessons is that we can't usually see moray eels eating in their natural habitat, but we can use their dental physiology to hypothesize how they capture and eat prey. 
So the driving question will be, how do moray eels capture and eat prey? Students will investigate how moray eels eat by engaging in a series of facilitated discussions, which will lead to guided investigations and experiments, both of which will model real life current practices in ecology and evolutionary biology. So I made seven lessons. The first and the last lesson are pretty much the same. Um, it's a role-playing survival game where students role-play a fish in a coral reef community and try to eat to survive and avoid predators to not die. The point of that is really just to be a low-stakes formative assessment to see how students' responses change you know, over time as they learn more information about aquatic life. Um, the second lesson is observing more eels. The third lesson is called observing levers. The fourth is quantifying levers by measuring jaws. Then it's quantifying differences by measuring teeth and then connecting everything with 3D teeth. Thank you. Have a nice day. If you have any questions or if you want to see the lesson plans more in detail, let me know. Bye.